and, and start things off for questions. Coach, I'll, I'll start it off. Um, why now, why this university? Uh, you mentioned about entertaining other offers, in particular the NFL. So what, what swayed you to Mackey State at this level? Um, you know, you only have so many times uh, for that moment. We, uh, we started our book, uh, and we're right in the midst of our chapters um, before there was a pause. And uh, we weren't finished just yet. That they still have more chapters to this book uh, and helping build something very prominent. Uh, this job, unlike the one that I uh, just left from, has something very unique, rich tradition, uh, extreme amount of pride, uh, things that you don't necessarily have to invent. It's here. Uh, it's been done here before. Uh, and it's been done at a very high level, consistently. And so the opportunity to come to a university that embraces um, athletics, that embrace football, that recognize that this football program is the front porch of our great university. And as our football program goes, so does our university. And so uh, when you look at, from a leadership perspective, a president, an athletic director, a provost, guys that are blue and gold, that they bleed it, that they believe in it, um, it's hard to pass that up because you don't get that often. You don't get that type of support from an administration who's committed to it. And when a president looks you in the eye and say to you, i like you to be the face of our program, it's endearing, uh, it's special, and it was an opportunity that I could not pass by to get back in the great state of Louisiana uh, to do what we do best. Coach, you mentioned your end at UTSA obviously didn't end how you wanted it. Uh, do you feel because of that, that this next chance at a head coaching position, that you feel like you may have a little bit to prove? You know, uh, you're always your, your worst critic. And uh, I think it's important that you're able to look in the mirror. I think it's important that you are able to take the onus of something uh, and I own, we own what happened uh, at the last place. And because of it, we're better because of it. I'm better because of it. I'm a better coach today than I was four years ago. Uh, there were many things that happened uh, that you don't always understand why they're happening. Uh, but when you come out of it, uh, they're no longer wounds, they're scars. And so you were able to then move forward to take that next step. And so I think the years of preparation uh, got us to a point in 2016. <clears throat> and as we embark on 2020, uh, takes us to the next level. Um, and so not necessarily a, a redemption, if you will, but better. Better because of that experience and better and more readily prepared uh, to take the next step and to elevate uh, our program uh, where it rightfully should be. Coach, you talk about tradition a lot here, but you're going to be recruiting kids that weren't born the last time McNeese won a playoff game. Do you have to reboot this program or rebuild it, or where do you think you're at as far as that elite status? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's important that uh, that when you talk to a student athlete, when you talk to a, a group of parents, that you're a keen listener and allow them to tell you what it is that they desire and then be able to map out and give them a blueprint of this is how we'll achieve all the things that you desire from an academic standpoint, from a social standpoint, from an athletic standpoint, and post-graduation as well, that we know how to do this, that we've done it, that we have a blueprint of it, that all your dreams and all your desires that can become a reality. And I think when student athletes, when parents see that, they're more likely to embrace the moment. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, our millennials or our young men uh, are not aware of because of their age. They can't control that. 
But I think that when you can um, inspire someone who wants to aspire, that it's a perfect storm for them to be able to, to gravitate to that, to chase their dreams that eventually becomes a reality. How about putting together a coaching staff? What's, uh, what's your plans for that? Yeah, um, and so we'll, today we'll, uh, we'll meet with our current staff, um, visit with some of those guys, and, and just look at our personnel from a coaching staff perspective and, and how it fits with the things that we desire to do. Uh, certainly there's always a short list of guys you've identified uh, that uh, you have intentions on bringing aboard. And we have those guys identified as well, as well as many other candidates that, that desire to be here. It, it's amazing uh, the amount of phone calls, emails I've received in 24 hours to come to McNeese State University uh, to assist us in, in building our program back to what it's always been. And so I, I, I think we'll be in good shape in finding quality people that share the same ideals that are led by our president, our athletic director, and this head coach to achieve the things that we want. How tough is that with the time frame of two weeks before National Signing Day? You know, I've been here. <laughs> I've been here before, ironically. January 15th was when, 2016, when we took that job as well. Um, and I was sharing with Dr. Burkell um, an interesting piece that uh, when uh, Larry Fedora became the head coach at Southern Miss. Uh, it was a time frame similar, and he was a first year head coach, and to go in at the ground level with him. Uh, when Ed Ogeron became the head coach at Ole Miss, that was his first hire, and went in the ground level with him. When Dan Mullen got to Mississippi State, I was the first her coach hired with him and got in at the ground level. In every one of those cases, it's generally a late December, January signing or acceptance of a job before a signing period. So I uh, feel very comfortable and versed and understanding uh, to get it right, uh, not to rush, uh, to take our time, to be steady as you identify the proper staff as well as student athletes or, or prospects as well. Um, February 7 will come and it'll be a day that we'll uh, with intentions to rejoice. Hopefully we are able to sign um, as many as possible, but they have to be the right guys. It's the first day, not the last day, uh, and we won't rush it. If we have all of the guys that we've identified that meet our roster from a roster management standpoint with the attrition that we're gonna have, then we'll, we'll be excited. If not, we'll take our time and get it right because it'll matter most come September. So, Coach, just real quick, we're just excited to have you here. I know thank you're from you. LSU. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the media to act like that. <laughs> I just, I always want to go to the X's and O's. Yeah. Schematic-wise, what do you look at with what's here right now? What do you see the offense looking like? And what do you think that you're going to have to do to put the type of scheme that you would like to run? on the field. That's yeah, incredible. so uh, had a common a common foe a year ago in, in, in Coney Word, so got a chance to see our team then. Today we'll spend more time looking at individual personnel of what best suits us, uh, but on the surface we'll, we'll be a spread tempo oriented offense, uh, we'll be an odd defense, uh, and we'll play outstanding special teams with speed and with energy, uh, and then we'll, we'll cater to the need or to the best fit of our, our student athletes, of our athletes to uh, maximize their potential. Coach, when you mentioned the right guy as far as recruiting, what exactly are the, the qualities you're looking for in a recruit? Yeah, you know, um, character first and foremost, high character guys, uh, people who, who want to achieve. Um, and sometimes it's that young man who's a 3.0 student. Sometimes he may be the young man who is a 2.0 student. Uh, but just need a little guidance. And so we're going to be very uh, conscientious as we go forth with our student athletes, understanding where we have been and where we want to go from an academic standpoint, from a character standpoint, and then certainly from an athletic standpoint and fitting our style of offense and defense and special teams. But you're obviously known as a great <laughs> recruiter. Most of that, though, has been done at the FBS level. What yeah. would be the difference recruiting on the FCS level? Uh, nothing, <clears throat> nothing at all. I, I, I don't think we, we lower the standard.
that is it's a style of play. Now you got to recognize a lot of those young men um, were at times FCS um, recruited young men. Example: Tyron Matthews and so many other ones, Marcus Davenport. Um, but we saw something in them. We were able to evaluate them, assess, and project. I think it's important that you have a trained, discerning eye that has the ability to see a student athlete, not necessarily just what he is now, but what he's going to be in years to come. And they don't always, they're not always ready made. There isn't a, an exact carbon copy of, this is how he's gonna look, this is what he's going to be. They peak at different times, some earlier than others, uh, some later than others. And so I think um, I trust our evaluation. I think it has been our greatest asset over the years to be able to look at a student athlete, assess what he's going to be, to recruit him, then to develop him to be the player that ultimately he is. And so uh, I go back to 2004, 2005 at, at Mississippi, you know, we're, we're in the SEC and we have the number 46 class in the country that include Michael Orr and Michael Wallace and Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, et cetera, et cetera, and you get 10 NFL players off of it, John Jerry, Corey Jerry, and then none of those guys were highly talented. You know, some of those guys came from this 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 very state. My my first conversation with Les Miles, um, we had a conversation where he talked about um, the quality of the coach. And he said to me, you know, coach, I just you know, recruiting, I know you, you have a, a fetish or you, you're good at it, but we do it well already. Um, and so I kind of chuckled. And he said, why do you chuckle? And I said to him, um, you know, I don't know. That opponent that you just lost to from North Mississippi um, by X amount of points, you know, they had 21 guys that left the state. The one thing they had in common, that one of them had an offer from your university. And so we didn't beat you on them. We beat you in evaluating, but we didn't necessarily have to fight you in recruiting. So I think the evaluation piece matters, that the FCS student athlete certainly have capabilities and a lot of times to be an FBS player with development, with training. Um, but we, we won't compromise. We'll, we'll go after the best and the brightest um, in this city, uh, in this state, and then beyond as we touch the borders of, of Texas and Beaumont and Houston, et cetera. Uh, so Mobile, the whole I-10 corridor up and down to get the best players for us. So what is your role in beating the booster players? Uh, all in. Two feet in uh, every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Hey. All right. Oh, man. Yeah. Coach, some of the biggest recruiting you're going to have to do is going to take place within, you know, Certainly. the field house. Because you have, um, you have players that can transfer out uh, right away and be eligible because of the APR mm -hmm. situation. What's your message to those kids who have that option um, to try to get them to stay here? You know, uh, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm going to save it for them at 4 o'clock today because uh, I'd rather them hear it from me and not uh, media or social media. Uh, but it'll be one that's profound that they understand, that they understand um, that you don't have to go look for love in all those places, that you'll receive it here. Uh, that it'll happen on the football field, it'll happen in the classroom, and it'll happen in your everyday walks of life. And I think uh, we'll do our due diligence in giving them great comfort and knowing um, they'll be nurtured here the right way. Is there a chance that you could use that four game um, red shirt thing <coughs> to basically say you have four games to play as a senior, we could redshirt you the next year? Um, are, you, not, are you interested yeah, in that or? Uh, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's individually based. It's not a blanket, you know, this is what we're gonna do. It, it depends on uh, the student athlete and his abilities and the need of the team to contribute right away or not to give us something for uh, the latter. But you know we're trying to win in 2020. Uh, we're not tr we're not waiting until 2022 and looking to redshirt a whole bunch of guys. And some <coughs> some will redshirt, but our intentions are to be good right now. Coach, you can win, but you can't win a title, at least for one year. Yeah, you can win a conference title. Uh, but you can't compete in postseason. So that is correct. What, what kind of headwind was that and a challenge for you in discussion 
obviously not. Yeah. You took the position, so yeah. you look at you're looking at it as, as, a, as a one year wait, if you will. Yeah. Um, here's what I say: uh, we go out and we go play the game, and we control the things that we can control within this season. Uh, we do the things that we need to do in the classroom. Uh, we change that narrative. We uh, we we pitch our appeal. We deal with the NC two A in 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 the right manner uh, to allow us to control those things. It's happened. Uh, we've owned it. Um, and so we move forward with our season. Coach, uh, <clears throat> you're the first black head coach to be hired for football <clears throat> at this school's uh, in the school's history. What, if any, significance uh, does it have, and what does it mean to you? <laughs> um, it's, it's it's really twofold. You know, in one sense, is um, it's extremely significant and. In today's time, when you whether you look at the National Football League or collegiate uh, football, and uh, the minimal number of minority coaches that get an opportunity uh, to to lead a program, to be a head coach, and so uh, I use myself, allow myself to be used uh, to to inspire the next generation, the next young coach who has those same hopes and dreams and desires of, of being a head coach, much like the Tony Dungy's and Denny Green's of the world have done for me. Uh, they were the, the giants, the trendsetters, and uh, I hope only uh, to walk uh, minuscule in those guys' footsteps. And so uh, to be used as an inspiration for other uh, young minorities is, is something that uh, I take pride in. Uh, and then once we're here, you're a football coach. And that, uh, None of that matters. And so we we move forward and we do the things that we need to do from an organizational standpoint, uh, from a leadership standpoint, from a team standpoint to build our program appropriately. Obviously you're here, they just left a, lost a coach after one year, so stability is a big part. But they lost for more money. Is, is there, how do you kind of stabilize a program when it's such an arms race financially within coaching now? For the coach or for the program? For you and for your yeah. program now. Well, for me, we know I didn't come here for the money, right? This was not uh, this was not a money move job for me. Uh, it was one that was pure. It was one that was genuine. Uh, it was one that was sincere and wanting to. Uh, to be a part of a great university, uh, to be a part of a great administration, uh, to lead a program uh, back to what we've always been. And so that that part, you know, if that was the case, I, I wouldn't be here because, you know, the, the money wasn't the issue. Um, as far as the program, uh, we're no different than anyone else, uh, that we have to raise money and uh, we're committed to raising money. That's part of the deal of being a head coach. And I think when you're experienced in being a head coach and you recognize from a holistic standpoint all the things that go with running a program and commit yourself to it, it allows you to do so comfortably and not look for those other things or, or not have an understanding of, well, I gotta watch film. There's no way in the world I can go to the booster club meeting. You know, that, that comes with the deal. We got to raise this money. We, we have to go out and uh, we have to build it because, as it was said many years ago, build it and they will come. Much like this basketball arena, uh, we continue to build our football program and we get us get us back to the dominance of, that we once were. Uh, but it, it's part of the criteria of being the head coach and, and raising money. Coach, and, and we need to and we will. Coach, you, you, you saw on, on the uh, ICC level, mm -hmm. FBS level, yeah. the, the difference between, well, the power fives, if you will, the have and the have not. Uh, it's kind of getting that way a little bit with the FCS, with North Dakota State now winning, it seems like, at least ninth or tenth time the title of Jane Madison. You have certain yeah. upper echelon schools that seem to always be there. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since McNeese has been on the national stage. You mentioned in your introduction the envy. Call it a premier program, going to set the standard. Yeah, you know, I grew, so I was a collegiate player in the 90s. Right. You know, the Youngstown State games, the Marshall right. games, the uh, and I watched the carries, and the, you know, all those, the Zach Bronson, I, I played against those guys. Uh, and it was, this, this program was special um, for a long time. 
it was even more special uh, when we were winning Independence Bowl games. Uh, and so uh, we flash. We've seen it before. Uh, it's 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 one thing to get there. It's the next thing to sustain and to be consistent in doing so. Um, and that's a challenge. It's a challenge for every university, every program, uh, whether FBS, FCS, NFL, high school. You, you have to be able to do that. Uh, I think that we have uh, the intangibles that allow us to be in, to, in consideration. Uh, to be able to hoist the trophy in due time. When, I'm not quite sure. When we're good enough, we'll get there. But we have those things in place. When you have the right leadership from a president standpoint, from an athletic director standpoint, from uh, a support standpoint of an alumni base or donor booster and community alike, you know, we sh even with that, we still lead the Southland Conference in attendance. You know, and, and we haven't played our best football in the last couple, several years. But there's something magical about this place that people sit on, excuse me, the edge of their seats, salivating, waiting for it. Are we back? Are we, are we there yet? And so it's our job to be able to, to get that brand of football, that product that allows um, us to, to galvanize this state again. Coach, do you hate ULL? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I found out it was, uh, I never had any run-ins with ULL uh, or USL. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I never had any run-ins with them, and I found out that was, uh, has been a rival in, 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 in years in the past. Um, they're a good football program. Billy Napier has done a really good job with his football team. Uh, we'll have our work cut out for us um, in week one, but we'll be up for the task. We'll, we'll be ready to play. Have you had Daryl's yet? And if not, uh, when are you going to get it? <laughs> Dar uh, you haven't had it. No, Darryl I haven't had Daryl's. You have to get a Daryl's po' boy. Daryl's po' boy. What type? Surf and turf. I'm a surf and turf guy. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is more question? Okay. Anybody have anything else? In the back. I was going to ask, you mentioned uh, Houston. I'm from Houston, a new age grad. Um, I come out to be Houston. I support the program. Um, Thank you. A lot of talent out here. Um, you mentioned recruiting in the Houston area. I spent the past three years in Beaumont, Texas. You mentioned Beaumont. Is there any specific school or area you want to focus on? Because there's a lot of schools out there that they have good talent, but they don't usually see coaches. They usually have JUCOs and other. Yeah. This this recruiting thing, we kind of got it figured out. Like we we we're going to recruit now. That that won't be said. We'll we'll be visible. We'll awesome. be in the schools in this state and beyond. I have friends that are out there, and they look for us. Yeah, good question. Yeah, we'll be there. Thank right. you guys so much. Appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Much.